Okay, let's talk about creating photorealistic gold. Now, in the past, there are a lot of blog posts about creating gold and how difficult it is to get right and how one person's got it wrong and another person's got it wrong and different ways of doing blends and the problem with the fall off on the, on the gold on the edge. And fortunately today, we're in a position where this is no longer a problem. We don't have to worry about, is it photorealistic or not? Very simply, we can create pure, perfect, photorealistic gold. The way we do it is very simple. Let's not get too complex. We've got two things which we can use. We have OSL, which is Open Shader Language. This is where anyone can come along and write their own shader. And Chaos Group have done that, and they've created a shader here for metals. And this gives us a correct fall off on the metal. The problem with gold is the fall off. For example, this gold is the same color as this gold, but this looks much lighter. So that fall off has to be right. Otherwise your gold is wrong. And that fall off is not something which is easy to get right. You don't luck into it. You have to know what you're looking for. This fall off here, you see, that's much lighter than this. And so you have to make sure gold is correct, that what you have and the material you're creating has the correct properties. Otherwise it just lacks something. Okay, it lacks that special something which pushes it over the edge. And what we're trying to get is that something to push it over the edge. So in photorealism, this is kind of necessary and needed. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new material and we're gonna assign this to the ball. And then I'm just gonna click on here to show the background so we can see what's happening. And we're gonna make this black and I'm going to turn off for now reflections. And the reflection for now, I'm just going to bring it all the way up just so we can see that's, you know, perfect reflections. So what you need to do, you can do this with fall offs and I'll show you how to do that right now. You go to general, you click fall off and you plug this into your reflection slot. Now you double click on this, you close the mix curve, enable color map and change this to RGB. We're going to turn off green and blue, we're going to work on red, and then we're going to work on green, and then we're going to work on blue. Now, fortunately, we're in a position where, you know, Vlado here from Chaos Group, he has told us that the end values for the red, green, and blue wavelengths are 65, 55, and 45. So we can come along here, and we change this as by default on silver, so we just change this over to gold, and we come in here, and we type 65. And this is for red. So we come down to the curve, and we're going to be copying the blue curve here. You can copy any of these really, but we're going to copy the blue one. You just bring this, you know, right here, it tells you where it is. So we're going to do the polaroids, the blue line. So if we look, the P polaroids is 0.95, and over here is 0.91. So we can just click on this one and drag it up to 0.95. And then we're going to add another point over here. Make right click on this, Bezier Smooth, and this can be 0.91. And something like that. And then we're gonna turn off red and we're gonna go green. And up here, we just have to change this to 55. Now we're gonna get the same line, the blue one. And we're gonna grab this. And this is what, 0.79, and down here, 0 0.68. So, 79. Add in a point over here. Right click on there, Bezier Smooth. And make this 0 0.68. And then come back here. And do 45, and this will tell us our blue. Turn off green, go on blue, and here we've got 40 and 22. So we can take that, make that point 0.4, add an extra point here, pull this down, make it 22. Right click here, make this bezier smooth, pull that down, pull it back. We're just trying to match this curve, really. 
So we get it something close to that, which is about there. And then we're going to take this reflective glossiness down. I'm not sure, let's try 0.7. And there you have photorealistic gold. And like I said, if you look at the fall off here, you know, you can turn these on and this fall off gives you a photorealism and shows you what the metal is actually doing. And this is awesome. This was not available before. The other thing which is different with V-Ray 3.5, I think this came through, was GTR GGX here. Same with the OSLs, I think they came in in, in V-Ray 3.5. So before we would use Ward, you know, and people would use Fong for things and Blin, and we would go between these and see which one we thought looked better. And Ward was always used for metals, but now we have Microfacet GTR GGX. And what this does is this is, if I open the preview window here, just so you can see, this controls this fall off here around this highlight. So, you know, if I drop this down, if I go 1.5, it's going to become much more blurry here. This is what's changed is the fall off. This controls the tail fall off. So the glossiness has stayed the same. The reflection has stayed the same. But all that's changed is this tail fall off. And if I go the other way, it becomes tighter. The tail becomes tighter. So the reflection has stayed the same, but this tail has become tighter. Now, before we... We didn't have this option. We couldn't do this. We couldn't mess around with this. And so what you had to do is you had to take a blend material and you had to take these and you had to have it in ward and you had to have about three of them with fall offs going in. And only in that way could you get the correct tail here on this fall off. But now with uh, GTR GGX, that's no longer necessary. So I can say to you, this is photorealistic gold. And you can come along and you instantly have it. And somebody can't argue with you, can't say it's wrong, can't say it's incorrect, can't say anything else of that sort. It's just, this is photorealistic gold. You know, this has been studied by scientists. They've given us their findings. They've given us what they believe to be the case and how you measure gold. And that's exactly what you're looking at right here. So you don't have to worry too much about if it's correct. You know it's correct. You've just copied the findings of a scientist, you know, and this is from this book here. There are various books here. So, you know, different people at times study, have studied gold and they've told you the exact details of the refractive index and these fall offs and how it all works. And because they're scientists, they're not necessarily going to agree with each other. They're just going to go, this is my findings and they'll be slightly different. But you and I know, you know, that if you look at a photo of gold and, you know, you, you look at some other gold, I mean, even just look here, this gold has different properties to this gold, has different properties to this gold. So, you know, of course they're going to find different things. It's not a uniform study. You know, these are photos. And so these, the colors in here have been changed through A, the lighting and B, the camera. So these are definitely not, you know, correct for correct colors of gold you know all cameras they change the color just ever so slightly and the lighting if it's a yellow lighting it's going to change the color if it's daytime it's going to change the color so so there's a lot of factors here to be looked at but the point is is different scientists have different findings so you can go through and you can choose different books if you want and have a look at them but they're basically going to be very very similar and they are all going to be photorealistic gold all right having said that the other option, and the option which I love now, is the OSL option. So if we come back here to the one we had before, and what you do is you have to go to this website, you go to here, the Chaos Group, you can just type in Complex Fresnel Shader and you'll find this page. And this will give you a link to Refractive Index, and here, and then you can download and save it, and I've put it in my root directory of my 3ds Max file. Now, what you do is you come into V-Ray and you need this V-Ray OSL text and you plug this into reflection. Now immediately you'll see it goes black and that's because this is an open shader language texture. So anyone could have written this. This could be any type of shader and we haven't told V-Ray what type of shader it is. So we have to tell it it's that complex Fresnel shader. So by doing it, we click here 
And we have to navigate to where you've put it or where I've put it. So I have put mine in my program files, Autodesk, Max 18, and I've created a folder in here, OSL, and it's right there. So now it knows it's a metal, and it knows to look at this N and K data. So this is what you need to mess with, and this is what you need to change. And this is fairly simple. Like he says here again, you've got 65, 55, and 45. And so we're going to go 65 and just copy this N, Control-C, and come along and put it here. And then copy the extinct coefficient, which is that curve, and put it there. And then we're gonna go 55. This is for the green, I'm gonna copy this. Paste it in there. And then the K. Paste it in there. And then we're going to go 45. And we're going to copy this here. And we're going to just place that right in there. And then we're going to do the same with this one. We're going to copy this and paste it right in there. And right there, you again have photorealistic gold. So these should be extremely similar. You see that? That's the fall off from the scientists. And this is with the extinct coefficient, the n and the k parameters. And so we know both of these are photorealistic. And we don't have to worry about either one. We know they are. And that's that. Now, we can add details, you know. I, I love adding details into these. I, I find, yeah, OK, that's photorealistic gold. Fantastic. Now, let's put something in there to make it fun. So. What I do is, you know, I've gone through and I found some references here. There are various grunge maps, and we just view these. Um, and first of all, we'll take that one, and we're going to just drag and drop it in here. And what we're going to do is, let's go general, uh, let's go composite, put the composite in here, layer one. And we're just going to add and plug that straight in there. And this is instantly going to change everything. So we really don't want it changing everything. We can put it on overlay. Uh, maybe soft light. Yeah, soft light's better. OK. And then we can use color correction to adjust this so it changes that color as little as possible. So we want to look at this. This hides the layer so we can see what the difference is. And you can see it's bringing in a lot of yellow. So I'm just going to desaturate it, and again, turn it off and on. On, it's still bringing in a lot of yellow, but we also want to make it lighter, so let's put two. Just go to advanced gamma, put that at two. And then let's turn it off again. Still bringing in yellow, so again, actually let's make that three, and let's desaturate it some more. Let's see. There's very little change there, but it is actually making a difference to this. You know, if I render now, you'll start seeing some details coming in. See, there's just a very faint details being added here to the gold texture. All right, now we're going to add in an extra layer here. And, you know, Actually, what we're going to do is we're going to grab this one and we're going to plug this straight into reflection glossiness. And you can instantly see that's making a massive difference here. So what you need to do, this is too dark here though, right? So again, I could adjust this in Photoshop, but instead we're going to come in and go color correction and put it in there and let's go advanced and let's make this lighter. Just bring it right up three. That's great. And I was going to add some more details in here. I want some more, you know, non-reflection going on. So let's try this concrete map. And let's put that into layer three. And let's make that multiply so we just get the darkness coming through. All right. And then let's click on these. And let's bring this blur down. I really don't like it being up high. 
I find it affects it. You know, I'll, I'll play with it depending on what material I'm creating, but in this case, I like to have it where I know what's going on. No, in this case, I just find it adds in a lot of, you know, stuff that I don't like. Okay, so we got a lot of stuff going on here, a lot of detail. So let's try... Let's get some more detail going on here in the reflection glossiness. I wonder if I put that one straight in. And then if I put in a composite... Layer 1. I add in an extra layer. And I put that on. And then I make this layer... Overlay. And then we've got this one set at multiply there, right? Multiply at 100%. And what happens if we put that one on the bump? And what do we get? Well, I'll tell you what we have. We have an awesome photorealistic gold texture. And I'll render that out. And uh, that's it. That's how you create, and that's how you play around with these maps. But that's how you create photorealism and in gold.